Retro Django here. In today's video, we're gonna talk about my favorite, second favorite Amiga, the Amiga 500 Plus. My favorite Amiga is the Amiga 1200 because it has got AGA and two megabyte chip RAM, right? But this is ECS system, but still with two megabyte chip RAM. So easy to upgrade to two megabyte and I love it. So you guys are writing to me, Retro Django, you always show powerful Amigas. We just wanna play some games. We don't need all that power. We just gonna, we have this nostalgic love. We wanna play those old games. International Karate, Turkin, Last Action Hero, Super Frog. And, and when we look at the prices on eBay, on Amiga 4000s, Amiga 3000s, they're just ludicrous compared to what you're getting. And I get it, I know what you mean. So, you guys are riding, you just have an Amiga 500 and you want to play games like I show in my videos. <laughs> and when I show it on my videos, I actually think everybody is up to date with WHT.gaming and you know, run everything from CFSD card. But when you guys are writing, how is that possible? Then I just, oh, you're absolutely right, man. Back in 2018, I didn't know what that was. So let's just go back to the bare bones system. The Amiga 500, or in this case, Amiga 500 Plus. A lot of you guys, you have got an old Amiga 500 somewhere, someplace, and you wanna enjoy this. You, you watch my gameplay videos, and you have your old floppies. You have this floppy that's called FA-18 Interceptor, and you want to play those old games. So guys, Indiana Jones The Last Crusade. I'm telling you, first of all, if you have an Amiga 500, inside, you will, with a high probability, have a RAM expansion card, 512 kilobytes of fast RAM. Open up and take a look at that battery. Does it have a leak battery? If it has, just neutralize it if you can, clean it up if you can. If not, just order a new one. Just throw out the old one. But look at the pins if it has got some battery juice all over the board. If you have an Amiga 500 Plus, then it's dangerous. <laughs> it came with a built-in battery. And if that has leaked, you have to check that out before you give it power and blah, blah, blah or send it to, to someone that can help you out with it. Um, for me, the Plus version is just an am amazing version. It has got few upgrades that I just love. Other than that, I'm gonna show you what you need to be able to play games much, much faster than these floppies. The games I'm running are, call are, are, are called um, WHD load games, where all the games, no matter how many discs, they are uh, getting uploaded to the RAM and just runs perfect. Absolutely love it. And I'm gonna show you how you can do that. So how does this magic work? Games, workbench, no, no, let's take games. All right, guys. So I'm just gonna show you what WHD load is, okay? As you can see, it just loads up and you get this arcade game selector and you go down to something, you go down to A and it loads. I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove the keyboard in a minute. I'm just gonna show you um, what WS load is. So you can see Alien Breed or you can go down to Alien Breed 2 and press enter or press on your joystick. And back in the old days, you had to, uh, you know, switch between different floppy in third disc 2, she said. But with WHD load, the floppies gets loaded up to the RAM, and as you can see, it just loads and runs fine. The Mega 500 Plus came with the 68,000 CPU running at 7 megahertz. My recommendation: put in 8 megabytes of RAM, and you, if you have the Plus, put in 2 megabytes of chip RAM. Put in the 68010 if you want, but. You guys are writing to me, what do we need to make this kind of upgrade? I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you right now, guys, because you have many different options. And um, as you can see here, let's turn off the power. Let's remove this keyboard. 
and look at the guts of this beautiful Mega 500 Plus. Okay, as you can see here, as you can see here, we have got Speedfire 500. This card, I have showed it many times, I have reviewed it, I have showed so much stuff. You can run it as a 7 megahertz system, you can run it as a 14 megahertz system. You can actually have it as 4 megabyte RAM expansion or 8 megabyte RAM expansion. Right now, it runs with 14 megahertz and 8 megabytes of RAM. And um, that's pure awesomeness. Other than that, it has got this little adapter so you can uh, put in a compact flash card to it, right? So, Secret of Monkey Island, let's go down to something. Shut up the beast, too, right? Yeah, there we go. All right, so this is magic. Now, if you ask me, there are so many different ways you, you can uh, upgrade your Amiga 500 dash Amiga 500 Plus. This is, for the internal build, my favorite one. Why, you're asking, why is this your favorite retro? <laughs> well, first of all, we have got the 1 megawatt chip RAM here and 1 megawatt chip RAM here. So we have got 2 megawatt chip RAM. That's a must, that's a given. Good, 2 megawatt chip RAM. This is four megabyte plus four megabyte, so eight megabyte fast RAM. Perfect. So in total ten megabytes of RAM. That's that's ten megabytes is just ludicrous for an Amiga because we could do everything with one meg. You had one megabyte RAM, and you could run everything, right? So we have eight fast and two chip megabyte of RAM. They've got the 68,000 CPU still, which means it's highly, highly compatible. You can have, you know, faster CPUs or 30 CPU or 40 CPU. They are just not as compatible. You can have CPUs like this that has got a big 040 CPU here, but for gaming, they're just overkill and it's just the worst CPU ever, these 040 chips. Um, so highly compatible. With one switch, it can run at 7 megahertz and the other 14 megahertz. You can go, and I have put a link to this, you can go in at GitHub, you can build this yourself. It will cost you about 40 bucks to build this. And I have seen on eBay, people are selling these for 80 or 100 or 120. Yeah, depends on the day. But if you build it yourself, materials about 40 bucks maybe 50 today i don't know i had it for a year or two i think um and i'm telling you it runs rock solid first of all it's perfectly fine for all ecs ocs whd log games now this can't run a ga game so for this system it runs 99 percent of all software out there okay that's the first thing second thing no loose cables, no adapters, no wires that goes to the odd CIA or on the Gary, nothing. Because we have so many different internal solutions, guys. You can buy so many different solutions um, for internal upgrade. No loose cables. Okay, the next thing. So small and compact, intelligently designed, this is not designed by a dork that doesn't know what he's doing. This is designed by a great engineer. Everything is just thought of. I love it. Compact, smooth, just plug and play. Wow, man. Well thought of. He, the, the guy behind it is called um, Jan Bilena. And he has actually made the same card for the Amiga 2000. So if you have an Amiga 2000, you can actually get this card from his um, GitHub and put it in your Amiga 2000. I haven't tried that yet, but this is awesome. I actually put, um, I expanded the length of the legs and I put this card on the Amiga 2000, but you can have a real 2000 model that's called, that's called Spitfire 2000. Really, really like to try that also. Absolutely, my Amiga is hungry after it. My Amiga 2000, sorry. <laughs> And another thing that I really love is 
when you install this, now th this is this is greatness. When you install this, you can put in your keyboard on top and close the cabinet. No adapters, no uh, relocators. I mean, there are those, um, what are they called? Terrible fire cards. Just, just terribly designed, guys. You have to, how is it? I think you have to relocate it up here. I mean, the card, you buy the card and then you buy another card. You put that on another, I think you have to relocate it over here. <laughs> so stupid. But if you, it's something with, if you solder the CPU directly on the terrible fire, then you can close it down. So if you don't have an OCD like me that you want a, all the chips on a socket, then you can close the terrible fire some number, I don't remember. But as soon as I need to put some sort of adapter, converter, something, relocator, I just get turned off. I don't want to mess with stuff like that. I, I have, man, I have got sent those PCB boards and I, I, I don't want to mess with it when it's like that. So for me, internal build, this is a great, great card. You can also buy something called IDE 68K, it's called. Um, it has got a similar design. Uh, how was that? I don't remember if it has got 8 RAM. I don't remember. Maybe it has got 8 RAM. I don't think the, the uh, CF adapter is like this. As I remember, you have to run a ribbon cable and an IDE to CF adapter. Uh, mess, you know, lose wires and give it 5 volt and mess, mess. And you have to give it those cables. Mess. I don't want to mess with stuff like that. No way. This is it. I love it. So every time you ask me, Retro Django, what do you use? It's the Spitfire 500. Right? Retro Django, Spitfire 500. You will see multiple videos with this. But that's not the only thing. Uh, adjusting between 7 and 14 megahertz, that menu, it gives me so much better speed boost. I have another video out where I put a cable here where I could switch between on the fly. I could switch between 7 and 14 megahertz on the fly. I have got a 30, 40 minute uh, hour long video out there where you can see the speed difference, how much it helps in gameplay. It's so cool that you can speed this up. It's so amazingly made. So another plus there. Absolutely love it, guys. And the last thing I want to share with you is there is another card that's absolutely masterfully done. And that's an external card that's called ACA 500 Plus. So you don't need to open your Amiga. So if you just have an old Amiga 500, maybe you don't even have a RAM upgrade. Maybe it's only Kickstart 1.2. Maybe you want to use an external floppy drive or external go check drive, whatever, because your internal is damaged. Guys, if you buy that ACA 500 Plus, you just open the side expansion, put it in the side, and you have got Kickstart 1331 workbench built in. You can copy from the card into the workbench, into the compact flash card you install. That ACA 500 Plus. I mean, if I didn't use this internal one, I would 100% say it's the second best thing. I just love this because it's closed, but the ACA is awesome too. Absolutely awesome, this guy. So my recommendation, if you want to play WHD Log games like me, Spitfire 500. I think it's one of the cheapest solutions out there. And you know me, if it isn't plug and play, if it doesn't work, I don't care. I share everything with you guys. But this one, rock solid. Because of it's running at 14 megahertz, I can feel it's warmer than <laughs> the normal, but uh, it's not, you know, critically nor uh, hot, no, nothing like that. So that's my recomm recommendation, guys. So when you're asking me, is this magic? How can you just play without swapping discs? Is it GoTech? No. It's just this, Spitfire 500, so cheap, put it in, 
and it works. <laughs> no hitter. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you have some questions, just let me know, guys. And then um, let me tell you about this case. You can actually buy brand new Amiga 500, 500 Plus cases today. Um, if your Amiga case is brittle, if it has breaking day, if it's brown or yellow, something, if you don't want to retrobrite, so you can buy that. You can also, also um, actually buy this PCB board uh, and, uh, you know, transfer all your original chips over. So cool. You can buy a GoCheck drive. It's a, it's a drive you can install here with a USB and you can emulate um, Amiga discs, ADFs. <laughs> doing this, you just make, need to make sure that all your chips are working fine. And if you want to do stuff like this, I would recommend do it with an Amiga 500 Plus, where you get the enhanced um, ACS uh, Denise graphics chip if you want higher resolution. I have never used it, but uh, the rest is the same, except fat Agnes over here. Make sure is the 70, what was it called? 7583 or 85, I, I don't remember. Make sure it's the one that can allow you to have two megabyte of chip RAM. That's pure awesomeness. This one, it runs everything. It runs everything. Don't, don't get, don't get caught up just like I did. You need a 68060. No, you need 64 megabytes of RAM. No, you don't need all of that. I was, I was just, it's, it's, it's so much, it's, you, well, you need it if you want to watch a uh, specific demo. Did, did, if you sat down back in 1994 and watched some really high-res AGA demo and you want to see it again, be my guest, buy that. But if you just want to enjoy, if you want to play some Amiga with your friends or show your children your Amiga, you just need this, okay? You need eight RAM, and that's about it. Isn't it cool, guys? You can have this enjoyment for a very, very low amount of money. There are some people out there that want to push those 68060 CPU boards on you. Forget about it. <laughs> okay, have a great day out there, guys. I'll see you on my next Amiga video. Retro Django, out. Bye.